All right, well, that's the only leak I saw. Let's see if we can't. There you go. All right, guys, somehow I became the unofficial uh, basement AC Coleman expert in, uh, I guess, the west side of uh, the nation. Uh, so currently I have two AC units here. There'll be a third one here on Monday. I got an old one for you off my uh, 97 or 96 Grand Vectra. Let's take a look at it. All right, so this one... <coughs> It's actually a friend and a, uh, actually a sub subscriber also. Uh, he didn't have any cooling going on on his first stage compressor, so I did swap his first stage to a second stage. Uh, well, his second stage to be a first stage, so at least he had some cooling. But it was pretty evident that there was some sort of leak here. So I got it pulled out of his basement. That's the uh, intake blower right there. This is where the air comes in. It's more like that um, one I did on the Alpha. Uh, all I have is uh, an airline using my AC flush tool right there because that's uh, why I go through things that we don't need to go through and I'm just spraying this with soapy water and I think it's pretty evident to see a leak right about there I don't know if it's just looks like it's just a crack I'll keep looking around for it, but that's how I find leaks pretty easily. Works on uh, AC systems or cars too. Yeah, I know this is not dry air, but it is 70 some odd percent nitrogen. Uh, we're going to evacuate this out anyways and pull a vacuum on it. That'll get the moisture out. And uh, there we go. Well, I got that one separated. <clears throat> Looks like it's just a flex point on the... Uh, on the line there, you can kind of see the crack right there. Since this is the line that's hooked up to the compressor, it does have a loop in it, but I guess over time it breaks it right there. So I'll see if I can't cut it right about at the crack and then solder this back together. It's just going to be a hard one to cut without smashing that line. So I'm just using a box cutter right here to kind of cut through it. This thin walled copper, I guess if you work it slowly, you should be able to do it. Alright, let's see. You guys can't even see anything. Alright, let me get this done. Alright, well, I think I got that cut pretty well. I swedged the opening up a little bit so that this would fit inside, and of course I cleaned it up. So now hopefully it should fit in there. I can wiggle it in there and we can hopefully solder this thing in place. Fix it. Well, again, I would say don't judge me too harshly by my phrasing skills or my soldering skills. It's not something I work on every day. So hopefully that got us fixed. See, I notched out right here, so I could actually get in there. Alright, I guess I'll do a leak test on it and see how we do. If anything that looks better, I don't know. We definitely got enough silver in there. One thing I hope is that... I don't know. We'll see how well this holds up over time. I mean, it's 20 years old. Actually, 23 years old. Maybe more. All right, so I got the system pressurized. We're at, uh, I don't know, 50 PSI. I guess I can crank it up a little bit more than that, right? Call it 100. Do I see any bubbles there? I think maybe we got it. Yes, now I just got to disconnect this, hook up the vacuum pump, and vacuum this thing down. 
All right, well, I'm just uh, vacuuming it down there. Then we'll uh, add some refrigerant and look, check for leaks. Uh, I could not pull a vacuum off of just one port. You can see how many cap tubes there are right here. I don't know, four? It just would not pull a vacuum. So I actually had to tap onto the other side of the system and put another valve in just so I could see if I can actually pull a vacuum if there wasn't a clog or something going on. So this has been running for about 10 minutes on vacuum. So if I close off that side, before it would just creep up almost immediately. And so it looks like I'm able to pull a vacuum now, which I guess is good news, except I don't have any, uh, I don't have any straighter valves in either one of these ports. I don't have my uh, tool on there, so looks like I have to tear this all back off again. Uh, take the valves off so I can put straighter valves back in so I can put this back into system because I was getting a little frustrated on this one But it looks like it's holding because it was really weird. I could pressurize the system and it would hold pressure uh, For I mean It would let air out I, I could charge it with some air and it would hold air and it would bleed off air for about the next 30 minutes But I could not pull vacuum on this so I think having the two ports is actually sol uh, solving that problem, which will make charging a lot easier anyways. It's just like, you know, added labor, added parts, added time. Uh, I'm sure hoping this is it. I think this gets us where do we want to go. So now if I just disconnect that. There we go. You can see how long it's taken for the high side to come back up again, even with that uh, opened up. I guess it's time to put some Schrader valves on and do this all over again. Of course, the Schrader valve it just sounds impressive. This is just uh, the valve core that you would get on a bicycle inner tube. Same thing, same exact thing. When you uh, push that down, it opens the bottom. And the bottom's just got a rubber seal on it. So that's it. It's a one-way check valve. Let's put those in and see if we can't get this one going so I can put it back in so I can get that motor home back uh, home to his per, uh, his owner and back on the way all right on this one we've been running it in the vacuum pump for about 15 minutes I close that off let's see if uh, we creep up any no I think we're doing pretty well guys I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn this off and then we'll start charging this So the easiest way to charge this is going to be with the system in a vacuum because it'll suck it in. At least that's the big hope, right? Alright, that turned on. Flip this upside down. Alright, now we'll get liquid into there. Now on this setup. We want 22 ounces. There's about two ounces in the line, so I need to put in about 24 ounces. Let's go ahead and turn that on. I'll tear that at zero. Let's go ahead and clear the line. Okay. Open that up. All right, let's see if we can get to go in. All right, we're just gonna try to get to uh, 24 ounces. We're just putting it in right now. See it kind of flowing in there still through the little window. Then we'll fire it up. I'll put some leak and uh, dye in it. Like Leak seal and some die seal, I guess. Whatever we're gonna call it. Okay. 
How exciting is this? Watching numbers go up a scale. 18. Twenty. That's twenty-one. So that's what it calls for. But we need to make an allowance for two ounces going through the hose. Right, I'm gonna start closing this thing up. Start closing this up. Let's see where that gets us. All right, just about where I wanted to be. So now I can turn this off here. I can flip this over. Oof. Turn you off. That's an exciting video. And now I need to put the Schrader valve back in on this guy when we're done. But I guess the next step would be to uh, turn it on and see how many amps we're pulling. I think I still have this one hooked up to power here, right? And yeah, let's get that mocked up and try to get the AC compressor going. All right, so you have to excuse the crudeness of my uh, my test operation here. I've been pulled a thousand different directions here the last few weeks, so I just have my power cord hooked up. We'll trace this pack. Okay, so I just have it going to line one power on the AC. This is the uh, the first uh, stage compressor relay. The thermostat would send 12 volt wires to turn that on, or 12 volt power to turn that on. I'm just using a cordless battery right here to mimic that. And then I have my amp meter right here. So I guess all I'm gonna be doing is operating the uh, compressor. The fans won't be running, so I can't do this for too long, but I just wanna see how we're doing. All right, compressor's turned on. On some amperage there. How's our pressures looking? Well, I can tell you this is getting hot. This is weird because this one's getting cold. Where's our amperage at? 8.2 and rising. Looks like maybe I have my lines hooked up backwards. I have the low side on the high side and the high side on the low side. That's the big hope, right? Yeah, that's nice and hot there. And, ooh, that's nice and cold over here. All right. I'm pulling 9.5. I think we're gonna call this good. I'm gonna go get some bubbles and spray my repairs. This equalizing there. Can't trust anything, right? What I do want to do is add some uh, dye and uh, leak seal just in case. I'm going to be using this Easy Seal Ultimate. Uh, this stuff's pretty expensive. This is enough to do <laughs> a seven and a half ton unit. Uh, that's going to be a little bit more than just that unit. So we'll add this and uh, see if we can't show how to add that. Okay, for this easy seal to work, you don't have to purge the system. You just have to put this in on the, uh, the low side and then use the high side to actually uh, push it through. We won't be pushing a lot through, but the instructions are pretty straightforward right here. Identify the high and low side. So even though this is blue, that's the high side. And even though that's red, that's the low side. Because I just identified that when I turned it on. Uh, close the valves, hook up this to the uh, the low side, and then it's going to say briefly open and then close the high side of the valve to allow a little bit of high side. There you go. Pretty straightforward. So this will have the uh, die and the seal in it. So let's open that up. Wow, look at that. Let's get that hooked up. All right, so I got that put in on the low side there. Even though it's red, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Got everything hooked up. Let me go ahead and turn the compressor on. Turn the thermostat on here. All right, and it says you just open up 
the high side a little bit and that'll push it through. So I'm just gonna open that up and we'll take a look at what's going on. Okay, you can see it going down. Added more than enough, I think, for this small of a system. So, that push that much in. Turn that off. And, uh, let's turn our compressor off before we trip it. And that was it. That was actually pretty straightforward and simple. Now we just have to disconnect everything and get this thing put back inside. Well, put it back together. That'll be a lot easier for you, for you guys than for me. Now, of course, don't forget we still have to put our valve core back in over here. So that valve's off. And just make that. All right. Get our valve core. Put it in our installer there. Put it back into that guy. Slide that guy back down. Tighten this up. Okay. Now we can open up. Oh. Now we can open that back up. Push. Push. <laughs> Push it back in and start screwing it in. I'll tell you, this is a lot easier with two hands. Let's try it with two hands. So you can see that pressure from the system pushing that thing back out again. But now we are tightened up. Turn that off. Now I can disconnect that. And hopefully I don't lose my entire charge, right? Look at that. The valve core got installed. Let's put some caps on and put this AC unit back together. I also figure I should probably oil these motors, right? Seems like the right thing to do. All right. That's the inside blower motor. I already did the outside blower motor. Same thing. All right, guys. All I have to do is put this thing back in there and test it out and hope for the best. Seems like that's all I ever have is hoping for the best. So I'm going to have to drop these bolts first before I can slide it in. Then undo the wire that I tied bucket back out of the way. It's kind of hard to see, but this is uh, the return. This is supply ducts that go up into the room. Because they go to the top right there. All right, let me see if I can't get this installed and we'll test it out. All right, well, I got it mocked up here. I got us plugged into 50 amp service. So let's see if we got power down to here. Alright, so 240 there, 240, how about 120, and 120 there. Right, let's go turn this AC on. Now I may not have explained it, but this is a basement AC that only the second stage was working because the first stage had a leak in it, and that's what we found at the top of the condenser right there, and hopefully we fixed. And thermostat, this is 50 amp service, so it should be able to run both of them. Put into cool and temperature down. And let's go outside. So, see if we can make this thing work. Well, there's the inside blower running. There's one compressor. <clears throat> Going eight amps on that one. Wait for the second one, hopefully, to kick in. There goes the second one. And then the outside blower should be on high now. Let's see what we're pulling on. The second stage.
All right, let's let it run for a little bit and see how we do. Well, I don't know if you'll be able to hear it or not, but I got the uh, the sniffer, the leak detector, to see if why it's running, if I can detect anything. Set it to high sensitivity. And I'm not seeing anything. Guess we can go ahead and put the black light on. Here's the black light. Let's see if we can see anything. Don't see any green coming out. So I think with that, we're gonna call that good. Now this is a section that was actually bad that we cut out. And it was just gonna be metal fatigue. So this repair went pretty well. What I have to do now is uh, disconnect power, turn this thing off, put it in place, bolt it up, and it's done. All right guys, so there it is. We're still pulling pretty good amperage on that first stage compressor. Uh, we'll go check it out on the inside, but that's uh, how to fix a uh, basic AC from RVP. This model number was a 6795B832. Kind of make out the serial number there at the right light. But it's pretty easy to see where the leak was. It was pretty easy to find, put it that way. I don't know how long this will last, but this thing's... Uh, 22 years old now. Almost probably 23 years old. Okay. What do we got coming out here? Well, it looks to be about 40 degrees coming out there. I'm going to call that good. And just so everybody knows, the air filter, there is an air filter on this basement AC. It's under the kitchen sink, right behind this panel right there. That's where the air filter is. So. Make sure you change those out too. Alright. Guess we'll go ahead and turn that back off. Back outside. Um, just have to put this back together. That's not too much of work. I won't bore you with that. So there you have it guys. That was uh, some, some success. That was a pretty big job. Having to uh, pull the basement AC. Fix, find the leak, fix the leak, uh, add two service ports, fill it, leak test it, put it back in place, and uh, then test it out again. Uh, I know RVP's uh, response and Winnebago's response to put a roof AC in. That's probably what I would recommend next. Uh, I actually told this, uh, this owner his second stage was still fine. Just use that until it fails, but... He wanted to try to make the first one work, so thanks a lot, guys. Now, I only know how to do any of this because early on in my career, when I worked at a Winnebago dealership, I happened to work with two very knowledgeable gentlemen. Uh, Winnebago, of course, used these basement ACs for a long time. They didn't bother to teach us anything at the at the dealership or uh, from Winnebago. I guess they just said, good luck and figure it out on your own. But the two gentlemen, one was uh, a really, really, uh, he was my shop foreman for a while. Uh, his name was Rick. He's no longer with us. But uh, the other gentleman, his name was Bob. He's just the, the nicest, honest, uh, <laughs> most honorary guy from Pennsylvania. Uh and uh, he taught me an awful lot. I'm indebted a lot to him. So, thanks a lot, Bob. Thanks a lot, Rick. And you know, Bob actually, uh, he followed his dream about six years ago, seven years ago, and he bought an RV park out in Tennessee, over by the Smoky Mountains, uh, Bailey Town RV Park. I've been meaning to get out there. So, Bob, if you're watching, maybe I'll come visit you. <laughs>